Dartmouth researchers say since the 80s, our region lost 5 to 10 percent of the snowpack each decade. That's a lot. They attribute the decrease to changing climate. All this week, our Environment Northwest team is looking at the shrinking snowpack and its impacts it is having in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Our Sophia Bliss shares how essential the snowpack is for water supply in southern Idaho. Southwest Idaho gets about 12 inches of moisture each year, including both rain and snow. But we would be a complete desert without the snowpack. It's everything. Snowpack in Idaho, Oregon, and Washington is essential to a successful irrigation and farming season. The snow melt feeds into our reservoirs, and reservoirs are kind of like a savings account. Ideally, the water will be there when we need it. The runoff in reservoirs flows through rivers and canals to homes and farmland. I've been uh, farming and been an orchardist since I was five years old, where we had gladiolas and chickens when I was a kid. So I have been orcharding now for just over 37 years. Lance Phillips owns and operates Gem Orchards in Emmett. If I could make a living and give my fruit away, there is nothing better than having someone come out to the orchard, pick the fruit that I have worked so hard for for nine months and see the joy on their face. They're so happy, the fruit of my labor, so to speak, and, and it is literally fruit. Phillips moved to Southwest Idaho about 25 years ago. During that time, he's seen a lot of variation in the water supply. I've seen in the last just couple years that we're getting more moisture in February and March than where we used to get a lot in January and February. An EPA study says over the past 50 years, more winter precipitation has been falling as rain instead of snow. They expect that trend to continue. Specifically for Idaho, the EPA says the snowpack season is about 40 days shorter. We've gone into the falls in October where we've had very dry Octobers and Novembers where there was no water in the ground. In dry years, water managers have had to cut the irrigation season short. This most recently happened in fall of 2021, ending the season about a month early. We talked to the former Boise River watermaster, Rex Berry, that year. We've got a lot of money invested in these crops, and when they can't get the, the full amount of water that they really need, it puts stress on some of those crops and uh, consequently the reduced yield. According to the University of Idaho, the Gem State is second in the nation for the amount of irrigation water used only behind California. We will actually have sprinklers now that we can see above ground. Phillips has lived in several areas of Idaho with different watersheds. I really like where we're at now. So um, a good reliable watershed that, that we have at least 50 to 80% of our water on a regular basis really helps me able to raise and do what I do. Even with a more reliable water source, Phillips switched to a method he has more control over and doesn't waste as much water. He, like others nearby, uses sprinklers and a drip system to limit the amount of water he loses to the soil or to the air. We've changed a lot in going from uh, a lot of flood irrigation to a majority of our farms and ranches, in our area at least, are converting to sprinkler and higher efficiency systems, pipelines, we're seeing canals lined, and how we manage it has had to change change that may become even more necessary as the snowpack is expected to continue shrinking across the Northwest. But I think all of those evolutions have been great because it allows us to, to conserve and extend and use it with more precision. We may be able to put more of that back towards wildlife benefits and other benefits that help everybody. For Idaho's News Channel 7, I'm meteorologist Sophia Bliss. So while some of the watersheds are reliable in southern Idaho, they are very dependent on dams and reservoirs, which right now is an aging infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. Some dams in the area are approaching 100 years old. The infrastructure on Lance Phillips' property in Emmett is about 90 years old. The Bureau of Reclamation built the current canal system and tunnels in 1937. Some of the ditches that bring water to farmland are still dirt, which as you can imagine, is a much less efficient option. The dirt absorbs water as it's transported. By the way, there is infrastructure on the Gem Orchard property that's from before 1937. So growers in the area have relied on irrigation waters for their crops for about 100 years. While the changes in water supply we've seen haven't necessitated a widespread shift in infrastructure yet, it's possible we see increased efficiency become a priority, prompting a change. 
Farming is not the only industry impacted by changes in water supply. Tomorrow we dive into our rivers to see how this is impacting salmon. You'll be able to watch the final installment of the Shrinking Snowpack series tomorrow on the News at 4.